right, my name is Rachel Francine, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Musical Health Technologies. Um, I've been working on the internet for, since 1996, and now together with my co-founder, Andy Tubman, a certified music therapist, we are creating musical pharmaceuticals and distributing them through digital networks. Over the past 20 years, neurologists have proven conclusively that singing can have profound benefits on our health. Yet up until now, music as medicine has never been successfully scaled. We achieve this by first digitizing an evidence-based music therapy practice called lyric cueing and turning them into easy to use Android and Apple apps. Then we combine them with proprietary programming and protocols so that hundreds of millions of healthcare professionals, caregivers, and individuals themselves can safely and effectively administer music as medicine. Now, while the market for music as medicine is huge, we decided to start by focusing on aging, caregiving, and dementia. This is in part because in 140 years, there has been no successful pharmaceutical intervention for dementia. So new kinds of protocols and practices must be brought to the market right now for this growing crisis. So in 2013, we launched SingFit Prime as an enterprise solution into the long-term care industry. We currently have over 100 enterprise clients using SingFit Prime, and they pay us for our technology and content licensing, as well as for, as well as for our training and support. So what I want to do now is show you what this looks like in a one-to-one -one scenario, which is very similar to the direct-to-consumer caregiver version we're gonna be launching at the end of this year. And soon I'll hear, and soon I'll hear old winter song. Old winter song. But I miss you most of all. But I miss you most of all. My darling. My darling. When autumn leaves, when autumn leaves, start to fall, start to fall. Climb every mountain. So as you can see. The SingFit products get clinical level results with absolutely no side effects. And, <laughs> but addressing long-term care only addresses about 10% of the market. So this year we're launching a huge caregiver and self-guided initiative to address the more than $200 billion caregiver market that is out there. Since we launched SingFit Prime, we have achieved many of our goals, the most important of which is that we've helped tens of thousands of people and their caregivers live better lives. Thank you very much. Good job. I was really hoping, in honor of Prince, you would sing your pitch to Purple Rain, but no luck. <laughs> you know what? I actually have been humming Purple Rain for about a week now. It's, it's unavoidable, but yes. Great. Yes. Can you tell us more about um, the, the scientific basis of what you're doing versus like just karaoke or sing-alongs? Sure. So there's really two things, um, two main things. So the first is, as you heard in that video, the lyric prompting, right? So the words of the song are actually fed to the person right before they need to sing them. So for something specifically like dementia, where you've got memory problems, you might have um, sort of vision problems, this means that they can have an immediately successful experience, which is incredibly important in dementia care. There's also a very neurological reason which is that the Broca's area of the brain is where words are released from. And so prompting, that kind of oral prompting, has been proven to help release those words. So when you have somebody with aphasia, for example, when in aphasia therapy, you actually use prompting, just v verbal prompting, to get them to speak and then release those words. So if you're just doing typical karaoke, you don't get the sort of engagement immediately. So, so the sort of neurological reasons are, are one reason. The second reason 
is my partner, who's the certified music therapist. And so what we do is we create our programs around evidence-based music therapy practices that have been used for years. But the problem is, is that there's only 6,000 music therapists in the country. So this has just been proven impossible to scale. So what we do is we take those kinds of protocols and we put them into programming so that it's easy for, say, an activities director or a CNA or a, a loved, you know, I call it the love economy caregiver, right? It's easy for them to follow. So it's not just kind of sitting there because it's important that you're figuring out what's, what's that specific person's favorite music, right, to get them engaged. So there's both the neurological sort of aspect that's different as well as the programmatic and clinical aspects that are different. Plus you need alcohol for karaoke. <laughs> I, I, I have a great alcohol karaoke stat that I can tell you about later. <laughs> I was just curious, could you um, elaborate a little bit more about the training? Um, is it just a pamphlet that goes in with the, um, the, the music that you send off to the, the caregiver or is it um, you know, sending people out from the company to help train? So there's, there's sort of a scale that we work on. So, so this SingFit Prime was really our proof of concept. And so we were going into senior living communities and we were training. So we actually, in this version of SingFit, we actually go out and do in-person one-day training. And we are working on digitizing that training so that it doesn't need to be fully online anymore. However, when you talk about the caregiving version that we're launching at the end of the year, that does become more of a, of a specific online training, um, you know, training modality. And our goal really is to have it be ever deepening. So the way we look at it is that there are certain people who just need something. They're going to visit mom at the senior living community or house, and they need something to be able to connect with. So they just need like a four minute video to learn how to use it and get going. And then there are other caregivers who are more involved who really wanna know like, what's the ISO principle, which is this you know, music therapy principle of mood matching that can deepen the way that you can, that you can care for somebody with dementia, which can be very difficult and music can be incredibly helpful um, if you just have a few little tricks of the trade. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the durability of the effect or yeah. the, the dose, if you will, and whether this is intended, obviously everyone's different, but if it's intended to be sort of chronic therapy or something that's more episodic depending on the condition. Yeah. So you're right, like it is dependent on the condition. And so if you're talking about something like speech therapy, for example, so the technique that we use here is um, that we digitized is the same technique that Gabriella Giffords, music therapist, used with her um, when she had left hemisphere brain trauma. So in that case, a one-to-one -one music therapist was doing this prompting, and, and so there is a end goal to that, right, to get the speech going. With something like dementia, Right, you're talking about sort of a more ongoing therapeutic process where it is done. You know, we have some communities where they use SingFit 14 times a week. So they use it in the morning to create focus. It helps keep the residents in the activities room all day long. And then they'll use it again around four o'clock to help mitigate sun the, the effects of sundowning. Um, but in terms of the carryover, like in terms of does it work, one of the things that I am personally the most proud of in everything we do is that the SingFit tends to engage the formally unengageable. So there's people who stay in their room a lot and social, social isolation is a big, is, am I over? Yeah. Uh, it's a big problem and we're able to unsocially isolate people who are socially isolated. Great, thanks a lot.